Okay, welcome back. So in the last video, we set up a background job for refreshing YouTube tokens, and we showed how to set up uh, Rescue and Redis as our queue adapter for, for background jobs using Active Job with Rails, and we showed how to like write just a very basic active job called Refresh Token, Refresh YouTube Token, that was just simply printing out a string. So in this episode, what we're gonna do is show how to deploy this to Heroku and run background jobs in Heroku uh, in production. So there's a couple of different pieces that we need. Um, the first is that we need a, a Heroku add-on called Redis, or we need one of the Heroku add-ons that allows you to use Redis. And so we can say, find more add-ons here. Um, and we can search through this and look for Redis. And we'll find, there's like Redis to go is a common one. Heroku Redis is common. There's several different options that all basically provide the same thing and that is a Redis database. So today we're just gonna use Heroku Redis. And so you can just copy this Heroku add-ons create Heroku Redis. And that will add the add-on to our uh, Heroku instance. And once that's done, a special environment variable is created. So we can say Heroku config pipe grep um, uh, Redis and a, oh, it should have, oh, you know what? It's not done, it's not done setting up yet. But it, this is gonna set up a, a Redis URL for us. Um, and we need to go create an initializer. So in config initializers, we need to add a rescue.rb. And in here, we will define which URL to use for our, uh, our, our rescue, I'm sorry, our Redis, our Redis uh, database for our rescue adapter. So the way this works is we're gonna require the Redis server stuff. And then if we're in development, so rails.environment.development, so if we're in development, we just want to use like the default, the default URL. So rescue.redis is going to be redis.new and the host is localhost and the port is 6379, 6379, okay. And then otherwise we're going to say rescue redis is equal to, and then we need to initialize a new instance of Redis based on the environment variable URL that we're given by the add-on. So we're gonna we're gonna parse that URI from the environment variable and then um, configure or initialize a new instance of Redis here. So URI is equal to URI dot parse env and then Redis URL. I just this is, so this is gonna be the this is gonna be the URL for the Heroku Redis add-on. Other add-ons are gonna have different environment variable names. And so like maybe one of them is like Redis to go URL or Redis database URL or something like that. And so then we can, once we've parsed that out, we can then just call like URI.host and URI.port. And in production, this is gonna have a password also. Let's say URI.password. When following the guides, this actually becomes a constant that um, that you can use in a sev several other places so that you only have one connection, uh, I believe is the purpose of this. So, okay, so now that we have this set up, I think this is actually rescue server also. All right, so if we're in development, then we wanna use the default. Otherwise, we wanna use this production stuff. So let's go confirm that the development piece works first. So we have our, we have Redis server running here. We've got our queue that's working. Um, so let's fire another background job by running uh, refresh YouTube token .perform later. This should enqueue a job in the background and then execute it over here. Um, in fact, actually let's, uh, let's stop the server and let's um, restart our Rails console session so that we have clean, a clean slate here. Okay, environment. So I must have spelled this wrong. Or maybe this is just env. Okay. So we're gonna start the worker again and then we're gonna perform the, the or enqueue the task again and we have enqueued it. And cool, we see that it's coming out. So it's still working in development, that's great. Now let's confirm that this is working in production. So one of the things we can do is say Heroku add-ons colon wait. Heroku add-ons. Uh, wait and then give it the name of the add-on Heroku-Redis 
so that we can see if it's completely set up yet. And it looks like it might be. So um, we can also do Heroku add-ons open Heroku Redis just to see like a little bit more information about the add-on. Uh, just like some settings and some basic information about like how how many clients we have and how many requests we're making in into uh, into this database. So that's kind of cool. Um, but it looks like it is actually set up. Right now, I'm just taking advantage of the fact that like this is a Rails app. Heroku knows that it's a Rails app and it knows that there is a default dyno or whatever. I actually don't know what the name of this is. So like a default thing that it should do, right, when it's executing or when it's like firing up the server. And so because it's Rails, it knows that it wants to run this, this command. Now that we have several things that we want to do, in addition to like the web, we also need another worker that can run in the background. And so at this point, we have to create what's called a proc file. So we're gonna open up and create a new proc file. And I'm just gonna keep the web, the, um, the command for um, the web worker to be exactly the same. And then we need to create another one called rescue. And this one is gonna be the, the same as our command for executing here. So it's gonna be Q equals star, rake rescue work. And in production, I wanna be a little bit more explicit and say bundle exec, just in case. Um, and then one thing that's worth talking about is that when you say Q star, that's saying like, queue up any job from any queue and execute that. But technically, if you wanted to have like some order of priority on your queues, you could say something like urgent, like high, uh, medium, low, or something like that. And this would say like, okay, if a, if a new task comes in that's urgent, execute that before any low tasks and execute any high tasks before medium and medium before low, et cetera, so that like your most urgent tasks go out first. So for instance, your urgent tasks might be things like sending auth codes when someone is trying to log in because you want that to go out really quickly. A low task might be like chewing through a list of email addresses to send out some marketing email or something that's not super time sensitive uh, and it's probably fine if it happens over the course of an hour or something. And then maybe medium is like, okay, I want these to be higher priority than stuff that's in the low queue. So this might be like, you know, maybe high is like uh, some web hooks or something, some webhook events. I don't know. So that's kind of the idea, but um, I have only needed to have like separate queues a couple of times. Uh, it can be useful, but most of the time I just, I'm just doing a, a couple different background jobs and it's not a huge deal to just throw in star and execute all the queues. By, by creating this proc file, now when we deploy to Heroku, we should see another line show up here in terms of our dynos. So let's say, let's, let's add everything here, um, like add background jobs, push Heroku main, and I'm gonna speed this up. Okay, cool. So here uh, at the end of the output for deploying to Heroku, we do see that there's um, now two different types of processes that have been defined by our proc file and we finished deploying. So now if we come back over to the Heroku dashboard and refresh this page, um, now we see a new, a new like dyno type and it's disabled. There's a couple ways we could, we could just like edit this here and say, you know, enable it. Or you can say like Heroku PS scale um, rescue dash one or something, I think. And this, I believe, should scale it up to just like one free thing. Um, I don't know if we need to enable it. Oh, maybe it's equals? No, that shouldn't matter. Oh, there we go. Okay, so that totally worked. So now, now both of our, our, like these dynos are sort of on. So if we were to open up the logs, we say Heroku add-ons open paper trail and look at the logs. Um, this will give us a little bit of insight into what's happening with the, uh, with the different workers. So now we have this app web one, this is going to be our web interface and we have app Heroku dash Redis, which is going to be, um, the Redis add on that's in the background. And we have rescue, uh, dot one, which is our rescue worker. And we can see that the, ch the state has changed from starting to up. So this is up, it's running. Um, and now we should be able to run. From the Rails console on Heroku, we can say Heroku run Rails console, and now we should be able to execute uh, one of our test tasks and 
uh, confirm that in the logs we are printing out um, what we expect. So I'm just going to copy the same job there and we can run it from Heroku. So refresh YouTube token job dot perform later and again we're in queuing the job so that's working as expected and over here in um, in the logs, we can see this one log statement here that says, let's refresh the token. So this is actually working. We have successfully set up and deployed um, a background job system to Heroku, and we've confirmed that it's actually working. So that's cool. Now, the, other th the only other thing that we have left is to go to um, our actual uh, <laughs> app, the live app, and go to slash jobs. Um, which is saying something went wrong. So let's see if we can uh, uh, fix that. So I think it's likely the migrations. So one of the migrations that we wrote added a non-null field. And since we already had data in this database uh, upon Heroku, it's actually like the data that was up there doesn't really matter. But in order to, um, to run our migrations, we need to reset the database and wipe out any of that old data. The demo that we need to confirm is to go to our live app on Heroku and go to slash jobs. And yeah, just to see that we actually do have our, uh, our Redis web server thing set up here. So this is all looking good. And that is how you deploy background jobs to Heroku. Hopefully that was helpful. If you like this episode, please give me a thumbs up and uh, let me know what you're building in the comments with background jobs. Uh, I know there was a question earlier about uploading video in a background job. Um, in the next episode, what we're going to do is actually hit the YouTube API uh, to refresh our authentication token in the, in the background job. So uh, if you are interested in that, check out the next video and we'll see you there. Mm -hmm.